Hello fellow explorers of the mind. Today I want to talk about journaling. What is it and how can you use it to clear your mind and take care of your mental health? But before I get to that, welcome to Psycho Explorer. If you care about mental health, like me, you can subscribe and explore with me the mystic world of human psychology. First things first, what is journaling? Journaling is a personal record of observations, thoughts, reflections and experiences. There can be as many types of journals as there are types of people. That means that a journal can be anything you want it to be. So for some people a journal looks like a diary where they write in full sentences in the form of a story what has happened or their thoughts or emotions. Personally I fall under this category. But not all people are writers or enjoy writing full pages. So some of them use bullets like I felt great today or I met a new friend or I saw my parents after a long time. It can be anything we need it to be at the moment. Don't stress about the details of it. You can journal about many things. You can do the so-called brain dump. That is, write whatever comes to mind in the morning or at night before going to bed. This will help you clear your mind and put an order to your thoughts. This is very useful, especially for chronic overthinkers like myself. There are days that so many things have happened and so quickly that I didn't even have the chance to check up on myself, to see how I'm doing. Writing in my journal helps me process my emotions and become more aware of reality. Has this happened to you someday that you are in a low mood and you can't even remember when it started or why? Writing about my day gives me an idea of the possible triggers of my sadness or my anxiety. While writing, I might remember that, oh yeah, my friend didn't respond the way I wanted them to, or my professor made a judgmental comment about my work, and maybe this is why I feel this way right now at the end of the day. Then you can put things in the right dimensions and move on. Another thing you can journal about is what is happening in the world. What is going on at this time of the year? How is your job, your relationship? This is going to be like doing a check-in. Or you can do some problem solving. For example, if you have a specific problem, you can write it down, maybe analyze it a bit and try to come up with solutions. Or when you try to make a difficult decision, you can write in your journal lists with the pros and cons of each choice and try to clarify in your mind which one seems the best for you. You can keep a dream journal where you can write about the dreams you had at night and try to make sense of them. You can keep a diet journal to keep track and organize what you're eating. Or you can even have a corner where you write about random thoughts or moments of inspiration. For example, you might write, I had never thought before that chocolate can make someone happy. Or you can have a gratitude corner or a separate gratitude journal to write five things that happened during the day that made you feel lucky. I read you two things that I wrote in my journal yesterday. Number one, I spent time with my mother. Number two, I ate my favorite food. This is an amazing way to put the focus on the great things and end your day with something that warms your heart. Or you can get some inspiration by prompts, which are questions or sentences that invite you to think and write about specific things. I will share with you three of my favorite prompts. Prompt number one. If X wouldn't have happened, I would have never learned that blah blah blah. This prompt gives you the chance to reframe positively something bad that happened and try to better understand what it taught you. Prompt number two. What hurts right now and how can I find relief? This prompt gives you the chance to observe yourself and your feelings and see if something is wrong. And if that is true, to also try to come up with something that could alleviate your pain. Prompt number three. What does no longer serve me? What is holding me back? This prompt will give you the time to reflect on what should be out of your life. Maybe you will realize that a specific relationship is toxic and doing you no good, or that your jealousy makes you suffer and you want to change it. I love writing around prompts, and I even made a prom jar in order to make the process more unpredictable and fun. There are no rules in journaling. You can write as often as you like. 
It doesn't have to be every day. Choose your pace. It should be something that fits your needs, your personality and your program. You can write with real pen and paper if you're more the classical type or you can use your computer. Up to you. Make sure it's something you like. For example, if it's a real notebook, you can decorate it as you like and make it your style. You can put stickers or draw something. My journal looks like this. I have put stickers with motivational quotes and funny faces. And I love even seeing it. I know it's mine because I made it. Keep in mind that we connect objects with feelings. So make sure to choose a journal that really inspires you to use it. Now inside your journal, you can do whatever you like. You can collage, you can talk about your trips and put photos, you can use any art form. If you don't know how to express what you're feeling with words, you can draw the feeling. I remember one time I drew my fear. It was this blue weird thing that represented my fear. And this exercise actually helped me because it made me see that I'm not my fear. Fear is something separate from me and I am many more things. Or I once drew some important relationships in my life. Like I drew myself in the middle of the paper, then up above I drew my grandmother, whom I see as an angel protecting me. And below, on the base, supporting and surrounding me, I drew some close friends. I use different colors depending on the feeling each person evokes in me and stuff like that. Or sometimes in my journal I write poems, I find it very healing. I journal since I can remember myself. I think it started out of loneliness. I was an only child, so no brothers or sisters to share the burdens of life. And of course I had friends and I used to talk to them too, but I didn't always feel like I could share everything with them. Or maybe I was embarrassed to say some things. We've all done or felt things we're not proud of. So I found someone that would listen no matter what I said and would do so without judging. My diary. The truth is that I used writing as a coping mechanism, so if you open my journals you will mostly read sad things. But the important thing is that it actually helped me when I wrote these things. I process what is happening, I express my emotions exactly as they are, not having to make them sound more beautiful or rational or acceptable. I vent. And I have found this to be one of the healthiest coping mechanisms for me. It's therapeutic to do this kind of reflection. It gives you awareness and it gives you space to realize things and then maybe take action. It helps me process my anxiety, my stress, my sadness or my anger. Or sometimes I write letters to people that hurt me and I try to find some ways to work with myself how to forgive them in order to achieve closure and move on. You know, very often much of the work can be done within ourselves. We don't even have to interact with the person that hurt us. Or sometimes I write letters to my inner child. Isn't it obvious that I study psychology? Well, I joke about it, but it actually really helps. Many of us have been emotionally wounded when we were children and this wounded child is still inside you, sad, embarrassed, afraid. It is your job now to recognize this child and make them feel safe. Writing to my inner child helps me understand why in the present, as an adult, I sometimes act in an immature way and then find ways to reassure the scared child inside me and take control of my life. Journaling can be a self-care technique. It is some time you put aside to work with yourself for yourself. It helps you prioritize your goals and organize yourself. It helps you see who you are and who you were. You know, I love reading old journals from the time I was 8 or 14 years old and remember how I used to perceive things, the problems I had, the worries that were torturing me, or how I got over some serious stuff. Oftentimes I have forgotten things that happened and my journals help me remember because apart from the sad stuff I also used to write about very happy and special moments like the time when my dance coach chose me for an important competition or when I met some friends in a random Greek island. Reading about these things brings back the memories and I remember the girl I was. I can track my progress and see how far I've come and maybe realize patterns in my behavior. I could talk hours and hours about writing, but that's it for today. I hope this overview helps you start with your journaling path. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about journaling, or if you do journal, how do you do it? Do you find any specific technique helpful and why? 
Thank you for watching. If you like my video, consider subscribing, liking, and ringing the bell in order to receive a notification each time I upload new content. I'm truly happy you care about mental health. Take care of yourselves. Bye. I drew myself, draw myself, and drew. Now I'm going to take a look at the camera. I'm going to take a look at the camera. I don't know. 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 I don't know.